What is up y'all? It's Chanel with K918 Dog Training. So I posted a, a short, I think last week, of Roscoe, the dog that I had as a board and train earlier this year, uh, showing some signs of food aggression or resource guarding. And I got a couple comments like asking how how do you fix this behavior? So I, I found a lot of clips that I took from when he was here that I just never posted about or never did anything with. So I wanted to kind of put a compilation of those together and show you my process of, some of my process of how we changed his overall perception of food and random objects because he, his owner dropped a makeup sponge on the ground and he, went for it, got all protective over it. So my goal was not to get him comfortable with me messing with certain things that he was involved with. I don't want to get bit. I don't want them to get bit trying to replicate that same scenario. Um, so what I wanted to do was be able to teach him to walk away from his food bowl so that I could go pick it up if I needed to, or I could put additional food in there if I needed to. Now, he, he is wearing an e-collar in this video. If you think that I'm using high-level corrections to punish him for this behavior, you are 100% wrong. You cannot punish or correct resource guarding out of a dog. If anybody tells you you can, run the other way. Do not hire them. It's going to make your situation a lot worse. It's going to create a lot of additional conflict in a situation that the dog already doesn't feel great about, and that's why they're showing this protective behavior over food or random objects. So I um, wanted to just put together a few clips of the progress to show you how we handled this and how we changed his overall behavior. So right off the bat, I needed to build a relationship with this dog more than anything, more importantly than anything. He was very friendly towards me, but he was a little nervous and skittish in the house for some reason, I think just because it was a new environment, but I needed him to trust me if I was going to make any sort of progress with him. So I really did not address any of the resource guarding issues for the first probably week that he was here. I did a lot of hand feeding, a lot of getting him to play with me. That was something that was a struggle for many days. He just wanted to bite the leash and I wanted to teach him to bite a tug and he was really timid of it for the first few days and then after I think about three or four I finally got him to bite on it. So now I had uh, a bit of leverage there in doing something with him that he enjoyed so that was our very first step. Then we just started with the very basics. I introduced him to verbal markers. Uh, taught him leash pressure, how to yield to leash pressure, yes. and then introduce the place command. And the reason for that was because if my goal was to send him away from his bowl, I wanted to make it as easy on him as possible and give him a designated spot to go to get away from that bowl. So really a yes. lot of behind the scenes work went into doing this before we ever even addressed the resource guarding because it's it's important to have a good foundation and a solid communication yes. system but also a relationship then i conditioned him to the e-collar same way that i do with every dog that comes to me for off-leash training and taught him that it means hey come to me or come to this designated spot because i wanted him to eventually think he didn't have any tools on him in the beginning i did put a leash on to get him away from the food bowl, but that was something I wanted to get rid of eventually. But I needed something to be able to add pressure and then remove pressure once he made the right decision. So e-collar is perfect for that. So the very first day that I worked on this, I actually took more safety precautions. I used a long line that I connected to a tree and kind of use like a pulley system just to keep myself safe. Then once I felt comfortable, I just used a slip leash and my e-collar and taught him that when you feel this pressure, I'm going to give you a command. I used the out command and that was an indicator for him that he needs to step away from the bowl and go back to the place. And as soon as he made the decision to do that, the pressure from both the leash and the e-collar would disappear. I did also use a release word. I used break to let him know, okay, now you can go have the food, you can eat it, and I'm not going to mess with you. 
And I just did this a bunch of different ways. I had him working around the food, but not directly eating it. I would release him to it. I would throw food into the bowl so that he knows me being near him is not a big deal, but comfortable knowing that I'm not going to mess with him directly while he's eating. I would reward him with higher value treats. I would reward him with a tug now that I know he's into that. Just painting a lot of different pictures for him so that he's comfortable with really anything that I throw at him. Then I left the slip leash on, but I didn't have a hold of it. I wanted him to still kind of think he was attached to me and trick him a little bit into thinking that I was going to physically pull him away. So that was a really good transition step. Then I took the slip leash off and just used the e-collar. Don't have the slip leash on this time because we're making progress. Roscoe out. Yes, good boy. And good boy. Good job, buddy. Good. And then we also practice outside again to change up the environment for him so that he learns the same expectation is set no matter where you're at and no matter what we're doing. Uh, and then I also kind of not phased out completely but worked on not utilizing the e-collar because I wanted him to respond to the word out as automatically and consistently. It, as if he were not wearing any tools at all. Uh, I just needed the e-collar to reinforce the out command and it worked wonderfully for Roscoe. But I didn't want him to be dependent on it and only out while there was e-collar stimulation going. So I hope this was helpful for somebody out there who may be dealing with the same issue. Now I will say this is not a DIY situation. Do not attempt to do the same thing at home because there's a lot of nuances. Every dog is different. Find a trainer and get some hands-on help to help you with this issue um, because I, I would hate for you to try it and make it worse. But that is just, in a nutshell, that is how I handled Roscoe and it, we had a very, very great time together. He's a wonderful dog. If you're looking for additional dog training content, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And also on Instagram and TikTok at K918DogTraining. We are located in the Tulsa area if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one help. And we do also offer virtual training for those of you who live anywhere else in the world. So please reach out if you are struggling. We would love to help you improve your relationship with your dog.